matter where you live and who you are, the one thing nobody can ever take away from you is your dream. All extraordinary things are opposed and ridiculed at first. Welcome today to follow this YouTube broadcast. And I'm very honored to have a wonderful guest today with To The Oceans Project. We have Yarik Wasma Birdman online. And his stories are just super exciting because just a while ago, I was flying from New York to Helsinki and we came across a tornado that was hitting uh, the area and came to the airport so that it wasn't sure that we would fly up. But Finnair took good care of us and we went right up and across the turbulence. And I was then thinking about Yari and that he flies over there without any airplane. <laughs> Under him, just his parachutes and his birdman chute. And it's just amazing. So Yari, you have so many uh, interesting and inspiring stories of spirituality, of the oceans, of the earth, of the sky, of the winds, that I would just so much like to hear uh, your opinions of the world in general. How do you feel about life? Well, first of all, Sidney, thank you very much for having me. I think it's really, really awesome, awesome to be in your show. And uh, since you decided to start with uh, such a small question that how I feel about the life and the world. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I suppose it's the mix of many, many things. You know, sometimes it feels like a tornado that you experienced in New York. And sometimes it's absolute calm and beauty. So so life, life, I think, consists of of I have a this kind of Eastern philosophy a little bit, you know, to life. It's a yin and yang. It's it's a light and dark, and it's the comp- complex mix of both of them, which are in the absolute motion all the all the time. And and that's how I see life and and every everything basically that I work with. I have so many questions for you today, and we would like to show uh, Birdman your story video to begin with to introduce you to the audience. And uh, To the Oceans Project is about uh, communicating about the oceans in a very positive, emotional way. So this project will be cooperating with Birdman Yari Kosma in the future. And we have just begun our cooperation in the way that we share these videos, but we will uh, also have Yari visit sometimes jumping so that we will be on live broadcast when he is in the sky. And uh, the aspect as a human uh, about the spirituality of his experiences is interesting equally. But uh, of course, it's a visual experience, it's a physical experience, and he has all his skills, how he uses them in his birdman suit in the, gut, in the sky. So Yari has developed this birdman suit. So you might want to Google birdman Yari was my own case says. But this video, will introduce his work to begin with this show. Sure, let me put it on. And uh, for the audience that just came, uh, please welcome. Um, just to let you know, the video lasts 1 minute 44 uh, seconds, so it's not, not too long. And uh, let me just... There we go. Because no matter where you live and who you are, the one thing nobody can ever take away from you is all extraordinary things are opposed and ridicule at first. My name is Yari Kuosma. I'm the owner and founder of Birdman LTD, which is the creator of the first commercial wingsuit. Back in those days, almost everybody who had done this before had died. The strange guy comes from Finland with a strange suit that everybody has been <laughs> afraid of. Uh, you have to do some convincing. In the beginning of the 1999, just when I was about to start this the wingsuit company, I was telling about the idea to my friends, more experienced friends. I remember they were laughing at my face. They just thought that I had completely lost it. Jumping, of course, the first time, you had to overcome your fears and you had to be absolutely convinced that, that uh, you did it better than, than all those other guys. 
you have to think of yourself that am I willing to do this? Am I willing to risk everything what I have, which is your life? Then you take that leap of faith. I knew it was working right away. I felt this incredible freedom. It was the best moment of my life. I knew that, that this was the future. And now we know it is. That is just amazing, Yari. Just I could just feel the freedom in the sky. It's like free fall, absolute freedom. But at the same time, you must be so skilled to control the elements of the air and the turbulence and the huge forces of nature in the way that you can survive in these forms. So please tell us more about the feeling, the body feeling when you are in the free fall in the sky above the oceans. You're, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, it requires uh, lots of um, skills and and uh, feelings, and in, in fact, to get back in touch with your feelings. Uh, so when we are born as, as as a baby and we come to this new new world, the the um, we probably feel lots of different kind of things: um, cold, uh, warm pain from different kind of things the light probably to our eyes is probably hurting and and the sounds to our ear are different and and it must be the scary place because everything is new but 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 then over the years we are covered up with all kinds of things we are protected from all different kind of harms at least hopefully we are but but we are protected from the cold we are protected from the pain and and all kinds of things and when we are training so we kind of forget how it is to be in the extreme environment and now when when we are a little bit older we might get the chance to get back in the air and and step step into the liquid like i uh, like to say or step into the void um that's a new environment completely free fall is completely new and 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 all these the the extremely um strong elements like uh, um even air is extremely uh hostile and strong element because if it, if it uh, comes to your face hundreds of kilometers an hour it can be extremely hostile and it, it can uh, take you to a kind of spin that you you lose your uh, uh, consciousness and and might even you know put so many g's in your head that you die there uh water you know we have we have raindrops there and and uh, you know when you go many hundreds of kilometers uh, of hour forward it, it it can feel like a, a blast of shotgun okay nobody ever sh shot me with a shotgun but it, it it's 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 that's how it can feel you know when when those uh, uh, hail drops come to your face and 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 your body and anyway so so you have lots of different kind of things and and you have to learn how to to feel those things in in the right way how to withstand those forces how to make all those um, uh, forces which can be negative or positive. Like I said, in, in a yin and yang philosophy, there is no good and bad. There are just are different kind of things. So you have to learn how to, to uh, avoid the ones that you can't control and control the ones and, and try to seek for the ones that, that you, you can control to your at, uh, advantage. And about the, the feelings, um, <clears throat> so there are three, three things that I usually tell people main things that I feel you can feel absolute joy which comes from from being absolutely free so so the freedom and, and joy at least to me they 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 are absolutely go hand in hand uh, but that freedom which you experience there that that goes together with the responsibility and sometimes the resp responsibility or the possibility that you cannot handle that responsibility can overwhelm you and, and it can become a fear. And if it becomes a fear, that's when you lose ability to do anything at all, uh, navigate and feel and so on. So, so, so it, it can become even bigger and so on. So you can have this incredible scale of absolutely everything, you know, from, from, from absolute joy to, uh, to absolute fear. Uh, 
and and to control those aspects all, all the time when you when you are in the extreme environment is is that's the key to success and and when you get that when, when you when you don't have a, a too much fear or not too much joy it all feels natural and in fact it's it's quite uh, amazing but flying the human being believe me or not feels natural if if if, if you don't let the fear overcome you it comes naturally to you. You just suddenly almost like remember that, okay, this is how it is to fly. <laughs> wow, it's, uh, my, heart, my head is like spinning, like I want to try this. But one time when we spoke, you told me people have to be really trained and that you, you just can't go up there and jump, you know, just not anybody can do that. You have to be well trained and you have to need uh, assistance up there before you're trained. So this is uh, not like a, a game. It is a, a, a sport for skilled. And the same time that you develop yourself comes to mind that with the years that you've seen the earth and the oceans and the rivers and felt the sky and the people and all the forces of nature there, that you must have developed and opened as a person as well. Uh, is this true? And did you feel that you came more close to who you are with these experiences by opening more to, to this risk by jumping? That's a really, really great question. And, and the short uh, answer is yes. I, I did have to to develop all, all the time. Uh, like in the beginning, I was talking about being a first baby and coming to this world, the same thing when, when, when you become a skydiver, you go to another world completely. And and anybody can do a, like a one jump or so on with, with a certain type of technique, but but then to become independent jumper, it, it's kind of like uh, uh, growing to the maturity as a human being. Uh, but then progressing in the sport in, in such a way that, that you become a teacher of others, and, and then maybe you develop your own discipline like I did and your own equipment and become the master of your own craft. I, I suppose the ancients call that something like not knowing thyself and so on. So, so not only you become to know who you are physically so that you can do lots of different kind of things, but actually that melts together with your mental capabilities and, and everything there and to master your yourself mentally is to master yourself physically and to be able to master yourself mentally you have to be all the time in the physical shape as well and and, and overcome challenges like that so so they are in the perfect harmony also there so yes uh um, try, try trying to develop and being on the road all the time of becoming better version of yourself that's the key of, of uh, not only survival, but also how to, to thrive in, the, in this in, in environment that, that uh, can be very, very dangerous, not only in the air, but it's, it's kind of can be dangerous everywhere. Although we are living in this modern society where everything is so uh, uh, safe. And controlled in many ways, and and but but even though we would not be able to jump like you do, and um, you've developed the Birdman suit, so you've taken it much more further than many skydivers. Uh, there's many who have it as a hobby, but you are very developed in the area. Um, from your stories, we learn about the freedom, uh, because as a human, you tell us of your experiences and emotions. And this is about To the Oceans project, is about communicating and sharing and hearing and listening to the other one's story to expand our own uh, understanding of nature and oceans. And the more we do that, the more we start to care about it because we realize there's so much to find there and it's highly inspiring. And your stories to me uh, make my imagination as well as my heart open to, to feel an area that is completely unknown to me, the jumping from the sky. Like when I was sitting in the airplane in the turbulence, I was thinking to myself, wow, they are such good pilots. They keep us safe here. But how would I ever cope to be without this uh, shield of the airplane? 
those conditions are for you. You are there without the shield. And you told me a story how you can use turbulences and the winds and the airs and the swifts up there for your benefit. And I thought this was really interesting. So, so what if you come across a turbulence like I did in a tornado in New York? What would you, what would you do up in the air in, in your Birdman suit? <clears throat> well, first of all, if there was a tornado, I would like to uh, try to avoid it. <laughs> so but, did we, but impossible. <laughs> but if, if I was about to, to uh, find myself at the edge of that, uh, that's something is is to to how to find find the ad advantage in the in, in any situation. Um, if you know enough about your environment and and things what's going on, and and you have control of yourself, then you can put yourself into right kind of wave of life. And and uh, air is is kind of like a, a thin water that you can see as well and and all kinds of motion uh in in the air is kind of like a motion of the the water in in the river as well so so you can put yourself into the right kind of wave and you can find the wave that is favorable for you and and for example if you if you want to go to certain direction you can go much faster if if you ride ride the 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 uh, edge of the the let's say weather weather um, uh, phenomenon like like a hurricane or something like that the big storm you you, you can find thermos which, which is upward going air and 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 it, it's warm so it can give you extra lift and it can give you extra speed and 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 you but you have to be also understand that that will take you much further to some direction where you are flying and and then we of course come to these philosophical questions that are you ready to go that far and 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 how far that can take you and so on but yeah it would be good to um, avoid it or if you're a thrill seeker like me you are going to be searching for it actually actually so that you can test yourself how fast and how far you can go <laughs> I, I believe often uh, to the combination of the non-visible and visible being always together. This is my own personal belief. Uh, it's not something that uh, I would say is a general belief, but it's my personal way to look at things. And from that aspect, I feel curious to uh, know how the physical feeling uh, is a spiritual experience up in the sky, especially regarding nature. Um, the elements of fire, earth, water, wind, uh, movement, uh, all together. But I often think of fire becoming like the um, reproductive or the like uh, the generating uh, in phenomenon, so that the other ones are more stable there in the movement, like always there, you know, not stably in one place, but always there. So. Uh, how would you feel about this unity of the non-visible and visible from your own aspect? And and do you feel the same when you have these experiences in the free fall for such a long time in your life? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, that's a something that I have uh, probably kind of experienced and realized since I was a kid. And, and always tried to become better at understanding all these elements and to har harmonize them. And, and when you talk about the fire, I think it was the um, Carl Jung, uh, at least one, one of those people who, who kind of put together that fire is same as in intuition. And, and for me, it was always that, that uh, if you put those four uh, ele elements together, you can get the fifth one, and, and which would be more like a, um, something called the sixth sense or, or something like that, which is exactly that kind of uh, trusting of the un unknown and, and being able to trust that and get actually the right results uh, <clears throat> more often than not non often. And, and for me was when we were talking about this kind of um, sensations before, you know, uh, feelings are one thing, but then the sensations like, like, uh, uh, feeling the G-forces and, and uh, temperature changes and the pressure changes 
and and so on. <clears throat> There have been many, many moments in my, in, my, in my life when I had to completely trust those senses. Uh, when I have not been able to see, for example, you are in the cloud or, or something happens and goes over your eyes and you can't see at all. Uh, you can't trust, you, you don't have necessarily all kinds of equipment that tells you about the directions in the air, north and south and so, so on. And you, you are in the place where you really have to know where you go. So you just have to trust, trust your uh, so-called sixth sense. And that means that you trust yourself. You have to have a complete faith and trust in, in yourself and your training and so on. And, 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 and it's kind of like a muscle almost that, that the more you practice these kind of things, the better they start working. And so uh, I guess to your uh, long, long answer to your question, but uh, the, it has been very important for me to try to train these kind of muscles. It's funny, I've, I've known you for a long time uh, since we were young in school and uh, you always uh, spread such joy about you and speak of uh, the life force. The joy of life and in the jumps you come across the near-death experiences sometimes and uh, you've told me that the more you've seen that element there is no rush towards any risk of losing one's life but you more feel the life force from understanding the value of life in this uh, how delicate that can be to lose it so this to me is really inspiring and and you have such a happy and, and fun personality that we've had so many laughs. And uh, I always admire this freedom that you have developed uh, in this field that you have chosen. So you're a great uh, teacher to us all in, in about uh, having this positive free attitude towards life. And also very spiritually uh, inspiring to understand that you look at the mother earth from the sky and we've seen the oceans and the rivers and the forest and all kinds of phenomena and animals in the sky and these uh, nature elements so you're just like a long series of books of stories that we just want to hear more of so in this video i would like to tell people that we will have yari many times to tell us stories also live into the Oceans project for the future. And uh, is there something else in images that you would like to share us today in this broadcast? Um, well, I, I do have another video here about one minute long, if you want to see it. And it's, it's, it's yes, about, uh, um, I was just mentioning briefly that I do see air as oceans but they are just you know thinner oceans and and I'm a, I'm a diver as well but i show you something about how it looks from my eyes to to fly among the clouds if you want it takes about 60 seconds absolutely here we go i think i might be able to there is no no talking or something like that so wait you can also comment in the background if you like while it's on we have our audios on the same time Now on the back, background, and these clouds can be huge, 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 and it's unbelievable. There's a small dot there. How do they feel when you're up there flying? Sometimes they can feel very wet, sometimes they feel very warm. And look, there's a hollow. That's pretty cool. I can see my own reflection. Oh, wow. And so you can actually feel a cloud. How does it feel like? Is it like soft or? How does it feel on the skin? Oh, it may feel like, it, it depends of course on the temperature and so on, but it, it may feel like um, just a bumble, a uh, uh, cotton, uh, so very, very soft and nice and warm and, and or just a slightly moisture and wet. I think that's and there you have the have the landing 
And when you think about the free fall uh, from, from that jump, how long did it take with, in time regarding? Was it like a few minutes? Or when, when, when we jump from 4,000 meters, which is normal uh, operational uh, altitude where we jump from, it, it lasts about two minutes as an average uh, free fall okay. with, the, with the wingsuit. And, and we are tra traveling maybe up to 10 five six seven kilometers depends a li little bit you know how, how far and and often we are flying together so that we are, we call it flocking like birds flock together where we humans can flock as well or we can go alone and just fly those those incredible uh, 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 clouds up there or of course we, we can just you know try for the performance we can try to go you know as fast as possible I mean I mean skydivers, Skydiving is probably the fastest sport in the world, you know, with, with non-engines. You, you can fly with the speeds of that uh, go beyond the sound. <laughs> and, and the Gs that we experience there can be so incredible that we break. Human body just, just breaks there. And, and the Gs, when, 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 when acceleration and, and the stopping goes, so it can be extreme. It, it really is an extreme sport in every way. It's very inspiring. Uh, what would be a wild story that you felt up in the sky? Did you bump into a bird or? <laughs> I, I, I never bumped into the bird, but a friend of mine bumped into a bird <laughs> in, in Australia, literally. He, he, he flew with, uh, to, um, had a kind of accident with an eagle, I guess, at the, at the quite high altitude, something like 6,000 feet or two kilometers. And um, some other, other guys I know, uh, they bumped into almost into something uh, just a couple of meters away and, and something came from the sky that looked like a football size of thing and, and just passed them uh in the free fall within a couple of meters so whatever that was nobody nobody knows but it was in the news in norway norway as well and, and... wow that's like it's it's really interesting and it's like you're completely in the free element of the air you never know what will happen up there. Absolutely, just like the oceans. When 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 you go diving down there and you find all these amazing fish and animals and octopus and and things that are alive there and they don't really care about you at all. Just it's another world. But I guarantee you, going up there, that's another world as well. Yeah, it's so interesting that you have both of those elements, the sky and the oceans, the waters, mm -hmm. that you dive in there, but you also jump from the sky. Really inspiring. And um, especially when we think about your life, um, life uh, offers us different things when it goes on earth and in our dreams and in our wishes. And we change along the years. We are completely different people now at the age over 50 then we were at the age of 15 and and then comes 30 and then comes uh, at some time after 54 or, or our age will be 70 and uh, hopefully more years after that so it goes really fast you know these times and why not put yourself out to the freedom and and try and this uh, sport is very difficult it's risky but your story is itself are uh, enough to to let us fly with you so i'm, I'm happy to share, share that with the with the audience and yeah it's kind of like um being a living living in the para paradox and and that's an interesting place to experience in life you know the external things and internal things. That's the same thing. So, so, so to have to, and, and balance those two things. And and I, I believe that th there are many ways to experience that and, and and do such a thing. But one of them is is to be exposed to the extreme in, environments, one way or the other. And and I guess some people are lucky lucky to be kind of born uh, something like that and and. Uh, be more balanced in the nature and, and because of the background or whatever but you know sometimes we need to train really really hard in 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 order to even understand that there is that other side <laughs> absolutely and and just a quick story one time long ago um i was in a self-defense class which was one of my favorite hobbies uh defender the scandinavian self-defense and i really enjoyed it very much 
And there was this man who was opposite me, who was older than I was, and he was able to use the energies in the way that he surprised me how far I would fly in the air. And he would just push a little bit like that with his arms and hands, and I would fly free fall like three or four meters, you know, <laughs> straight in the air on the floor. And when I was on the floor, I said, how did you do that? And he said, I didn't even begin yet. Right. So I was like, okay, we are we are now with the element of the unknown, like the energies that he would use with his hands and his body. At the same time, I would fly in the air. And I remember everything being so slow, like a slow movie when I was up there. Like I just had so many awakenings, like understanding, full feeling of safety, even though I, I did know, not know where I would land. So there was no fears up there. And something was just so natural and so self-explanatory and so slow motion. And the same time I had these spiritual awakenings, everything was like in clarity, which was a really interesting experience, even though I was in a threat situation of, of being hit and flying. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that there is something in our physical body, uh, the human side, that we just have some tendencies and elements uh, regarding risk situations where we have some spiritual connection as well, because there are so many stories about it. How do you feel about this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that's an essential thing is to the, the ability to balance all the different, let's call them energies, different kind of energies that we consist of. Um, and then we kind of have to be able to also think that not everything is mater material and maybe everything is actually just the, the, the energy. But anyway, there are ma many different kind of energies and, and, and they are not necessarily in balance you know, all, all the time and since we are birth, that they must be balanced. And and one way to balance them is is to find is is to um experience the opposite of where they are. And and so so of course for the person person like for example I, I remember when I was young um I was really really afraid of let's say loneliness and, and darkness. And I balanced those things. That was the first uh first memories in, in my childhood was when I was balancing those two things that that i really felt felt bad about so i went alone to the dark dark, dark forest and there i learned not only to be alone but to like the dark and that the dark was, was my friend and those trees that were shadows that i thought were monsters well they were actually my friends and they were guiding me and i was never afraid of dark and being alone again you kind of have to meet meet the devil you know in quotes exactly like whatever the devil is <laughs> yeah 